Hey everybody, this is the Scholar General Mo Jian Bing. So today I want to talk about the like four folding steel and forge welding steel in Chinese swords. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's also super complex and I know quite a bit, but I'm not technically a metallurgist, uh, but I feel like I can put some good information out there of things that I'm pretty sure of. So let's get started. So in today's video we're going to be using Play-Doh. Uh, kind of as an analog for steel and how you like mush it together and this is because for one I'm not a smith and I don't have like a real forge to show you and also It can be hard sometimes to see what's really going on in blacksmithing videos if you don't already know what you're looking at um, Because steel when it gets hot no matter what kind of steel it is it always turns Orange and you can't necessarily see different kinds of steel interacting when they're being forged together as easily all right, so we have our steel. <laughs> now the first question is, what the heck is steel anyway? So steel is um, iron and carbon mixed together. Now I'm sure most of people, most people know that, but um, it's actually more complicated than that because it has to be between 0.002% carbon or 2.14% carbon. And if it's between that range of, then it will be steel. But if it's below that range, then it will just be pure iron. And if it's above that range, paradoxically, it also becomes cast iron or pig iron. <laughs> so if it has too much carbon, it's iron. If it has too little carbon, it's iron. But if in the range between 0.002 and 2.14%, then it is considered steel. A lot of the times we hear about folding the steel. And whenever you use traditional furnaces or bloomeries to smelt down some steel, you, you sometimes will end up with a kind of a lump of material, something like this, which will be iron slash steel. The main thing is that it's actually not homogenous all the way through. There'll be some parts of it will have more carbon, other localized areas will have less carbon, and what you do as a solution, it also, also, it has a lot of impurities. And what you do as a solution is you start to kind of flatten it out, right? You flatten things out, and then you will, eventually you get it, you beat it into a square shape, right? And you, what the forging technique is, they'll actually put a cut, they'll frequently put a cut in, and then they bend around and then they just keep doing this. So, and you can see, you can already start to see, this is not the best example, but the, you can see we, we're starting to get layers. You see how we have these lines? We have lines in the Play-Doh. And whenever you see uh, blacksmith videos, you'll see a bunch of like, sparks it looks like sparks flying out whenever they start hammering but what that actually is a lot of the time is those are impurities because carbon the the slag and inclusions the contaminants within the steel will there'll be little pockets and it will actually melt before the steel melts so what you do is you get it really hot and it'll have these little bubbles these little pockets of fluid melted carbon and stuff in there and when you start to smash the steel it will, they'll fly out. So this just shows how you fold whenever you have kind of a, a one like lump that you get out of a furnace. Folding the steel actually gets more complicated than just folding a single billet because sometimes smiths will combine different types of steel together. For this video, I'm using red for like a higher carbon steel uh, or medium carbon steel and the green is gonna represent kind of a lower grade or like a mild steel that has less carbon in it. One way to make some pretty good steel, the lower and the higher carbon steels together, and then you like you do the same thing. You start to smash it, and then you start folding it. And the more you do this, you eventually get where you have all these kinds of layers. As you can see, my Play-Doh skills are not very good. You'll get some steel that looks like this, and then whenever you whenever you draw something like this out into a blade, it will have a contrast in it, it'll have a pattern in it. That's why this is sometimes called pattern welding. 
by Liangang, or Hundred Times Folded Steel, dates all the way back to the Zhou Dynasty, whenever China, whenever steel was first kind of being used in China. This was quickly discovered or used as a method to kind of refine your material and homogenize it. Like I'm using red for the high carbon or green for the lower. Real steel and iron, whiter or lighter color steel, will be the higher carbon content. The more carbon you put into the steel, the, the brighter the color gets. And the less carbon or the more iron it has, the darker the color is. Forge welding just means like you're taking a section of like relatively harder steel or relatively softer steel and you're heating them up and pounding them together and making you know making into some kind of form. The first method I'm going to talk about here is called clamped steel or inserted steel. What you do is you take your higher carbon harder edge piece and you put it into like a taco shell of softer iron so in forging, you'll, the, the shell will hold its shape, but because I have Play-Doh, I'm going to have to kind of do it a little differently. But you will put this in here, and then you your softer will wrap around it. And in Chinese, this is called jia gong, like clamped, because you're clamping over the steel, or it's called qian gong, because you're inserting the steel into the softer shell and what this does is see your edge section is going to be nice and hard it'll be the harder steel that'll keep an edge much better and then the softer steel on the outside will kind of protect it and it's more durable and not as brittle so the next method that i'm going to talk about is actually the complete opposite and this one is called wrapped steel or baogang and for this one you actually have your softer core and then you wrap a harder edge around it so you'll have something where in the middle of the sword down in the core it'll be softer but you have this hard iron outside and your edge will be on the outside as well so you have a hard steel edge and softer steel or iron core as well as the spine is usually left exposed in European medieval swords, this actually was fairly common, where you have an uh, iron core and you take some steel and you wrap it all the way around, and then you have hard steel edges with a softer core in the middle. Now in China, they had a different method for doing double-edged blades. final form of forge welding that was very common in China was called sanmei, or uh, sanmai in English sometimes, and this basically means three-plate. So what you do is you have a plate of harder steel and then you get a soft steel on one side and a soft steel on the other side. <laughs> so whenever you make your double-edged sword, you have your hard, harder steel in the core and on both edges and then you surround it or protect it by putting these softer steel plates on the sides. One final point that I'd like to make in this video is that what I've shown you so far is a very idealized image of how all this works. In reality, it's much more complicated. For example, this could be my hardened carbon steel, and as you can see, it has, uh, it's, or it's been folded to be refined, and it has inclusions of green lower carbon steel in it. It's, there's no such thing as like a pure like 1% carbon steel in the medieval or in the pre-modern period that takes an amount of industry that just did not exist in most of the past. And to make this even more complicated, during the Ming Dynasty in China, a new form of folding came in where from probably from Southeast Asia, and this was called twist core. Twist core blades are made by taking rods of steel with different carbon contents and contrasting colors and then you start to twist them together. With things like twist core blades, for example, if you wanted a really fancy twist core sunmai dao, you would take your twist, twist core, your mixed twist core, and you'd place it on both sides of your hardened steel core. And Voila! <laughs> a twist core doll, a, a sanmai twist core doll, 
Um, now these things are representative of extremely elite, um, like show pieces basically, but the fact is, is that what I mainly want to show is that you have your folding, there's different ways to fold, and you have different ways of forge welding or laminating the blade with different layers, and all of these things are interacting with each other, so even my high carbon steel edge core piece will itself be include lower carbon steel sections, localized areas within it. And likewise, on my hard sunlight or on my softer sunlight edges, in this case they're twist cores, will also have different variations of steel folded within it. So in this video, I basically just wanted to say that, you know, folding steel is done as a refinement process, and there's ways that you can mix harder and softer steels to get a pattern going, which was done intentionally at times. And once you do have refined steel, you can refine relatively harder steels and relatively softer steels, and then laminate them or forge weld them in certain ways to get desirable results for your sword, where you have a hard edge and a protective core or protective sides. Alright everybody, that's it for this video. I apologize for my poor sculpting skills. I should really work on those. <laughs> Sometime soon I'm going to make another video related to Chinese sword metallurgy, and that one will be about heat treatment. And I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about heat treatment. And if you're interested, let me know below if you'd like to see that. And see you all next time. Stay sharp.